I'm going to test the ketone ester KE4. So first I'd like to give a big shout out to the guys at Ketone Aid and to Frank for giving me this uh, to test with my sports training. And I should probably start with a little bit of a differentiation between uh, exogenous ketones. So this is a this is an exogenous ketone. And the other main type of exogenous ketone that's on the market are the ketone salts. So uh, Ketone salts are a formulation of salts like calcium, magnesium, potassium, um, sodium and the like and beta-hydroxyburate or acetoacetate. The ratio of salt to, um, to ketone is really high which not only makes it unpalatable but it also m makes it inefficient. So you'd see people testing their ketones um, and taking ketone salts and then uh, they would only see probably a minimal increase if any in their concentration of uh, blood ketones so maybe you'd probably see 0 0.3 0 0.5 millimolars uh, per liter after taking the ketone salt which does not bring uh, significant changes in energy metabolism but when you take ketone esters and many people have tested and posted their reports and their experiments um, online both on video and uh, in written form and uh, you can see people going from uh, let's say mild ketosis 0.5 or 0.6 millimolars per liter to uh, very deep ketosis like 5 to 6 millimolars per liter in a matter of minutes maybe 20 to 30 minutes and this actually is a significant um, increase in uh, the circulation of your blood ketones and also this brings significant changes in your uh, energy metabolism it shifts your energy metabolism to primarily burning ketones even though they are exogenous ketones so they kind of uh, are very useful in sports performance as a supplement and also uh, in cognitive uh, performance many people use uh, these types of exogenous ketones um, uh, for cognitive uh, performance but I didn't give you uh, I didn't give you the difference the chemical difference between uh, ketone salts and ketone esters so I told you what ketone salts are but ketone esters and I believe the formulation for ketone 8 or KE4 is uh, uh, D-beta-hydroxyburate 1,3-butane diol uh, so you and uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the formula. So uh, you not only get beta-hydroxyburate from beta-hydroxyburate itself, but you also get beta-hydroxyburate uh, from uh, the metabolism of butane diol. So when butane diol is metabolized within your body, it turns into more beta-hydroxyburate, which is why you see the significant increase in circulating ketones. Okay, so uh, this is probably enough with uh, the biochemistry aspect of it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to test this with my uh, with a CrossFit-like training session. So what I'll do, um, I have my protocol all written down here. Um, put the ketone aside. What I'll do is I'll have a baseline workout and I'll also have a workout uh, on the ketone ester. On this so I'm gonna take this entire bottle which is uh, 60 milliliters of substance and 30 milliliters of ketone ester okay so the baseline workout is gonna consist of uh, 15 minutes of warm-up then I'm gonna do 100 burpees uh, per time so as fast as possible uh, and then I'm gonna do five by five deadlifts. I'm gonna do, I'm, pr I'm probably gonna do uh, 10 sets of five by five deadlifts with progressive over overload, so constantly increasing the, the load. And finally, I'm gonna hit 2000 meters of rowing, uh, of the rowing machine, which uh, if any of you guys are doing CrossFit, probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the baseline workout and then I'm going to wait for a couple of days and I'm going to have the same workout on the ketone ester. So what I'm going to do then is um, I'm actually going to measure uh, my baseline ketones, so probably um, 
one or two minutes before taking the ester, the bottle. Then I'm gonna drink uh, the bottle of KB4. Then I'm gonna measure ketones uh, once or twice or at one or two or more time points within an hour after taking, uh, after, taking af after drinking the ester. Um, then I'm gonna work out. Uh, and after the workout, I'm also gonna measure uh, the blood ketones one more time. Okay, so uh, another thing that I want to point out is that uh, one of the objective measures that I'm gonna use uh, for both of the workouts is my Fitbit. So the Fitbit has um, a special tracking feature for circuit training and I've been using this uh, in my workouts and I'm also gonna use it in both of the workouts, the baseline and the workout on the ketone ester. So uh, it tracks heart rate and other different parameters. And I'm actually going to show you uh, both of the outputs uh, from within my phone or uh, from within the Fitbit app. Maybe probably from the phone or from, uh, from uh, the online website, from the website of Fitbit, which is synced with the device. Okay. Now to give you a bit of a background of myself uh, and the ketogenic diet. So I have a history with the ketogenic diet since 2013 when I first started using it. Uh, but, uh, or should I say, and I only started tracking strictly uh, every day. I started tracking my blood ketones in December uh, 2017, so about nine months ago. So ever since uh, nine months ago, I have been uh, measuring my blood ketones once or twice a day. So I've been strict ketotic, I've been in ketosis all this time, so I would say that I'm fairly keto adapted. Um, I've been weightlifting since, uh, or probably for seven or eight years, among other sports that I've been doing, like swimming and cycling and boxing and other sports. Uh, but I also, or I only started training CrossFit about two months ago. Um, and I kind of like it. So I'm really curious to see how uh, drinking this uh, ketone ester is gonna uh, impact my sports performance, my CrossFit, uh, my CrossFit-like type of training. Uh, what I also have to point out is that since I've been strict keto ketotic for uh, nine months, I haven't been car loading, I haven't, I haven't used any carbs or cheat days or any of that stuff. Uh, even more so, I've been doing uh, for for a couple of weeks, for the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, I've been doing uh, the carnivore diet, uh, a ketogenic type of carnivore diet, which uh, has a um, has a ratio of fat to protein, which is efficient for ketosis. So um, I it's not full blown protein and very little fat, but it's a uh, maybe I don't know. Um, maybe 100 to 150 grams of fat and uh, 150 to 200 grams of protein per day. So it's kind of keto carnivore uh, and it keeps me in ketosis, even though ketones are slightly reduced than when I do full blown uh, ketogenic diet without, uh, with moderate protein, not with high protein that I'm doing right now. So what I wanna say is that I'm not going to use carbs for this, uh, for this experiment. I'm only, so it's not, it's not gonna involve carbs. So uh, I'm curious to see how it's gonna turn out. 